Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about disposable soma theory. Basically, why do we die and what we can do to actually live longer. So first of all, what is soma? So soma is actually the body of an organism or all of an organism beside the germ site. So beside your genetics material, everything else is called soma. And disposable soma theory basically say for an animal or for a species overall, it is better to pass on the genetics and your body itself is actually quite disposable. So I'll be talking more about this theory based on a paper that I found from Professor John Spickman over here uh, because I, I, I found that he described the thing very well. So before we go into that, I want to talk a little bit about what is orgoarotrophy theory. So before um, Professor Kirk will actually talk about DST, disposable, disposable soma theory, short form DST, uh, Dr. Lassie Orgel actually talked about the error catastrophe theory in 1963, which means that why do animals die is because those kind of mistakes that accumulate during the DNA replication, RNA synthesis, and protein synthesis process. So every time you make a copy of a DNA, something goes wrong. Every time you make a synthesis of mRNA, something goes wrong. And eventually, when you live longer and longer and longer, this mistake accumulates and accumulates and accumulates. At one point, it cannot be repaired anymore, and then you die. Of course, this doesn't fully explain why certain plants live basically forever, and why do certain... Uh, not, not bacteria, but yeah, maybe bacteria or yeast cell live basically forever. Okay, so that it comes to disposable soma theory. So disposable soma theory explains that for animals, such as the smaller animals, and it's going to be uh, killed by external force, they will most likely be spending their energy trying to reproduce and pass on to their genes rather than actually maintaining their body because you have so much resources, you only have so much resources, what would you optimize for? So if you are a smaller animal like a rabbit, uh, it is likely that you spend all of your energy trying to reproduce because it is um, much easier to have like pass on to 10 long spring and one of it is going to survive eventually rather than trying to maintain your body because it is very very expensive to do that okay so so you can see that the, from the two figure here the first figure basically say the log um, mortality rate versus the log body mass where a larger animals are usually having a larger animal have a longer lifespan while a smaller animal has a shorter lifespan whether they die naturally or they or die of predators and so on, okay? Because they don't need to maintain their body for long, okay? There are exceptions such as like the tortoise or turtle where they have a very hard shell and they do not get eaten as easily as the other animals so that they don't, they are able to live longer. So, so tortoise is part of the age case over here, okay? So there's also another experiment where they try to keep two different, uh, two species of animal uh, in wild and captivity and see how their mortality ch rate changes. So in species A and B, if you see the, the solid line over there, species B uh, actually live much longer than species A in the wild. Okay, so that's one natural thing that they have. But what they do is that they take the two species and they put it in a, let's say, a zoo or an environment where they do not have any external threat. So you can see that Species A and B both live a lot longer in captivity, but species B, because of them having a better mechanism of maintaining their body, live much longer than species A, which actually die very, very fast, no matter what, no matter what kind of care do you give them, because their genetic itself does not contain those mechanisms, because they, do, they never did it in a while, they're going to get eaten the day after, or so on. Of course, this is not a complete theory by itself, and there are since the initial publication from 1977, uh, many people has made many comments about this disposable soma theory, and mostly it comes to LAM. So, like I say just now, species B has a much better way of maintaining their body, so they have a much better longevity act activating uh, mechanism. So LAM basically means that the, the genetics or the cellular repair system that is in the body to repair the body. Okay, so the, the, the overall concept is that LAM is extremely expensive, trying to repair DNA damage expensive and 
um, a lot of animal would not spend so much energy of it. The, and the, the overall mechanism of LLM are already well, I wouldn't say well understood, but they're a lot better understood than initially they published in 1977, and these are part of that. So some of them agree and some of them disagree with the system, but we're not going to go down that road, okay? So the next one is actually, the there's actually another paper addressing the disposable soil material in 1993 by Professor Kirkwood again. So the, the certain evidence and implication that he actually made comments on 20 years after you know the initial publication, and I think it's, it's, it, it, it boils down to the concept that no theory is complete. There's a lot of edge cases, there's a lot of things that's applicable, and there's a lot of things that's not applicable. Like there's another paper that I found from uh, some, I don't going to pronounce its name because it's very difficult, where disposable theory, disposable soma theory cannot explain why women live longer and why do we age. It's not, but it's a one author, one paper situation. But there are certain cases where this theory doesn't re replicate well or doesn't explain well. Okay, so there's another alternative from this uh, Professor John Spigman over here called the heat dissipation limit theory. So instead of saying that um, the the animal do not need the kind of uh, longevity at me, uh, longevity assuring mechanism or activating mechanism, he can say that the, the reason why so many larger animals live longer is not because they have the mechanism or so on, but rather because they, they have to reproduce slow because they cannot release the heat from the womb faster. Okay, so in so there's there's a surface ratio to to volume situation where you increase your volume by a thousand, your surface ratio will only increase by ten to hundred and so on. Okay, so what HDL trying to say is that uh, an elephant, if they can, if they are able to dissipate all the heat fast, they will be able to reproduce a lot faster. But there is a certain limit on what they can do, which is why they live which is why the, the birth process of an elephant is so difficult and which is why elephant needs to live so long. And the mechanism comes in to support that lifespan because they need the time to make a baby. Not, not the other way around. Okay, so you can see another here as well. So because of how big they are, uh, their metabolic rate also decreased based on their body mass. So the bigger animal usually has a much lower uh, basal metabolic rate because first of all, they don't lose heat as fast, so they don't have to generate that much amount of heat. But also, uh, they are limited by their own capacity to dissipate the heat, which is why their metabolic rate is slower, and that would also allow them to uh, live longer and stuff like that. Okay, so it's actually so. This theory comes from the concept that there are there's a study that established the factors of limiting lactation performance. So during lactation, which is the production of milk for a mammal, the the mammals actually needs to take a lot more food. You can ask your breastfeeding friend <laughs> to, to actually support the milk making. So that actually takes an extremely high amount of energy. And for an um, animal or mammal that have a very big body, it's very difficult to try to dissipate the heat that come from this production, which is why they need to live longer and which is why they eventually have more of this mechanism. Okay, so it actually shows that there's a linear relationship between the body mass and the basal metabolic rate, which is why the larger animal has a much lower metabolic rate, what they're trying to say. So, Back to the question of how do we live longer if we are not, if based on these two conflicting theory basically. So one of the mechanism that is being agreed on by most of the scientists here is that caloric, caloric restriction usually leads to life extension. So actually this is an extension from the heat limiting theory just now because you are not able to dissipate the amount of heat, you need a basal metabolic rate and the basal metabolic rate uh, reduce the number of errors and replication that you need, and that's why you live longer. So if you actually try to make your body not to work so hard all the time by reducing your calorie intake, of course, don't starve yourself to death, but if you re decrease your calorie intake, that decrease your metabolic rate, and when your metabolic rate get reduced, it actually triggers a bunch of life extending mechanism, and you're able to live longer. So. Summary, uh, disposable 
soma theory actually try to indicate that uh, there are smaller animals because they're gonna get eaten the next day do not have any mechanism to maintain their body and their body is basically disposable uh, some and there are some problems which is why some of the other scientists have come up with uh, heat limit heat dissipation <laughs> limiting theory which means that uh, larger animals live longer because they can't actually release that much about heat during the reproduction process which is why they need to live longer and just to reproduce and that living longer uh, required them to have those life extending mechanism in their body so in order for you as a human to live longer, first of all, make sure that you don't have any external threat so that no one pointing a gun at you and you're going to die the next day. So if you're not worried about that, the other way to live longer is to actually eat less food. So once you eat less food, your body has a lower metabolic rate and that metabolic rate actually activates the life extending mechanism and then you live longer. So that's all for the video. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.